Welcome to Pick Yourself Up. I'm Asagid Habtold, your host. Today I have a wonderful guest. She is entrepreneur, best-selling author, an immigrant. So I want you to learn from her experience and how she could be able to become successful. Mali, thank you very much for coming. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate this. Use 60 seconds and tell us who is Mali. Well, Mali is a child immigrant, child refugee actually from war-torn Laos, uh, who's lived here in the Washington DC DC area for most of her life. And she now, me, runs a company called the SOAR Community Network. Um, and what we do is we help businesses that are really caring about social impact with strategic communications and talent management. I have known you for almost 10 years and I see the difference, how much you have succeeded and so on. If you, if you have to use, use one word, what would that word be to describe you? Determined. Determined. Why is that? I think um, growing up in the United States of America, being of two different cultures, you, there's such a dichotomy in the world, you know, of who you are, who you think you are, what society expects you to be, how you should be at home, how sh you should be outside in the real world. And if you're not determined, if you're not creative, if you don't have tough skin, it's very easy to get discouraged here. And so I would use that word because no matter what, I figured out a way to push through and move to the next level and phase in my life. So as an immigrant, mm -hmm. what helped you to succeed in a new culture? You know, I would be remiss if I didn't say it was through mentorship. People that really, in throughout my life, and sometimes, oftentimes, unexpected people would basically say, you know what, you are special. You don't have to stay here in poverty forever. You're gifted. You're smart. You're talented. Let me help you. So they would find a way to take us to where we needed to go as a family. Um, my ninth grade teacher, Mrs. Cartwright, she basically gave me the gift of letting me know that I was a poet and a writer, and I didn't know that before. And so a lot of people throughout my life that have really seen something inside of me that I didn't even know to look for within myself. Wow, wow. So have you sought out for mentors also, like people who are going to mentor you, coach you to go to the next level? Always. Do I, you have, also, yes, I have personal ahead. coaches. I think about um, all of the previous employers that I've had prior to launching my business. Um, I, I think about the people I surround myself with. I want people around me who are smarter than I am, who are, who are much more successful in terms of my definition of success, because that energy, that spirit, that vibe is something that I want to seep through me. Yes. Awesome. So. Uh, let's talk about a little bit about mentoring because mm -hmm. I myself have been mentored by others because you can't go any further than what you know or who you are <laughs> right. unless you find other people exactly. to show you the way, unless you stand on the shoulders of others. And I appreciate the value of mentoring. So what do you think are expected from mentees to, be, to, to succeed in this relationship between a mentor and uh, a mentee? I think a lot of times it's putting our ego aside because, you know, especially when we have a personality that's very determined, mm -hmm. go-getter, self-motivator, the tendency is, oh, I got this. I, I, I know this. I work hard. I've, I pretty much know everything that I need to know to be successful. And that's just not true. So I think if we can basically become a sponge, always mm -hmm. think of ourselves as the two-year-old that's trying to learn in life. Um, and I think that would be a big help because then you don't get walls put up because you think you know it all, right? Mm -hmm. And it's more like, you know, pretend that I'm two years old and allow myself to have an open mind, an open heart, and almost like a pair of new, new glasses, right? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. just clear blank canvas when I, when I speak with mentors or my business coaches and let them teach me something or see something different. Uh, we don't know what we don't know. Especially true for leaders because leaders must be learners and you can't become a good learner unless you believe that you are incomplete and inadequate by yourself. You have to look for always for growth opportunity. Do you have some mentees yourself? 
Do oh, you pay gosh. back? Yes. Okay. Um, so I sit on the board of the Lao Heritage Foundation, and the Lao Heritage Foundation is uh, the mission is to preserve and transmit the Lao culture through the arts. And one of my mentorship roles is that we have summer camps, or we have different programs where the kids are learning about Lao music, Lao culture, Lao wow. dance. And beyond that, we also have classes inside these camps where we can teach them things like entrepreneurship or creativity or uncovering your passion. So I like to give back to the youth in that way. But also, you know, there's some pro bono work that we've done throughout the years uh, for clients that may not be in a position right now to pay, right? They yeah. may just be transitioning from a job. They're trying to figure out their passion. Um, they may be in high leadership positions, but they're not happy. They don't want to leave yet. Mm -hmm. They're nervous about investing, but they know there's something more for them to do as a leader. And so we do some pro bono mentoring as well because it's important for us to continue to help people understand that money shouldn't keep you from pursuing your dreams yeah. and your passions. Yeah. I mean, I came here as a refugee, so I'm first generation, but you think about the kids that are coming up now, they really are torn. Yeah. And, and in many ways, they might not even be torn, they're very American. Yeah. And our job is not to make them less American, our job is to help them remember where they came mm. from, where their parents came from, help them tap into the culture because as they get older, as human beings, we always um, want to know where we come from. It's an identity piece. It's yeah. a human need to know that we stem from some place and we belong some place or to some community or some tribe. And I think that's really our goal is to not um, make them less American, but to help them really uh, appreciate the beauty and the culture and the traditions that really make them a full package to be diverse, to give yeah. to the world in a more complex, beautiful way. Yeah, I, I came from writing on LinkedIn. Someone was questioning, you know, is it possible to help these kids really be, you know, Ethiopians and at the same time Americans? I believe it is possible for them to succeed in America and at the same time also helping them to maintain their heritage. I think that's a win-win to them, to their parents, to the hosting country, the United States, and also back home to Ethiopia because the more they succeed here, they could be able to pay back right. to their country. So they're, I think teachers, mentors, and parents should really help the second generations mm -hmm. to, to really embrace uh, about their their heritage, but at the same time also empower them to compete and become successful in the United States. Yes, I would agree. Let, let's move to the second one, which is about empowering entrepreneurs. You mm -hmm. are a successful entrepreneur. Uh, you are women. So tell me about some of the challenges that w women entrepreneurs are facing and how have you overcome some of the challenges that you faced? Uh, I think, you know, we have a tendency in, <clears throat> I would say, Western society to think and compare ourselves to other people. Mm. And one thing that I've learned through the years is really find out what you stand for and stand firm with that. Uncover your greatest vision for your life. Map out your mission. And that's all personal first. And then, if you're launching a business or have been in business, make sure that there's alignment between what you really desire out of life, which I call you know, mapping up to your spiritual service, mm -hmm. and see if you can actually align the, that type of service, that fulfillment, that legacy through your business. And as, as women, because we're nurturers and because we give so much, yeah. we don't take the time to pause and think about what we want. And so that's one of the challenges, but one of the opportunities we mm -hmm. have as women-owned businesses, and any business really, yeah. to, to take the time as a business owner or as a leader of an organization, because you can be um, entrepreneurial inside a company. So I call that, we call that entrepreneurial, right? Yeah. And I think that when you want to take that leadership position or, uh, or you want to be a visionary, you really first have to understand your own vision for your life and the type of impact you want to have. And your impact might not be like save the world, but inevitably we're all connected. So whatever positive <clears throat> attributes or services you put out there will save the world. Exactly. So women, <clears throat> excuse me, taking the time to pause and say, you know what, what do I want? 
what do I want to um, do in this life during this time in this form? I got one shot to do it, yeah. right? Yeah. And then voice it, the courage to voice what you desire, what you want, what you stand for, and who you ultimately wish to serve. When you can get, when you can reflect and get that for yourself and trust that your feminine power and your feminine voice matters, then you can start to really think about the tribes around you, other businesses, women-owned businesses, mm -hmm. um, that can collaborate with you, less about competition. There's too much to do in this mm -hmm. world, mm -hmm. too many people to serve, mm -hmm. to think that just because I do similar work that we're competing. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. together we're stronger. Yeah. So that's one of the things, is getting women to see ourselves as a tribe, a sisterhood, to take the time to pause, not give all the time, but reflect first so we know that what we're giving is really authentic and true to what it is that we're meant and designed to do in this world. Yeah. If I understood what you said, there are three key things. First, discover who you are, your Absolutely. uniqueness, and then align your business, whatever you do, whatever you serve, based on who you are, and based on your competitive advantage, and then voice it, and then form or join a tribe, because yes. you don't need to compete. You need sisterhood and people who are gonna join you, who share your purpose and your passion in life. What are some of the challenges that you see immigrant business owners face, and uh, have you or overcome some of these challenges, and what kind of lessons do you wanna share to them? Well, let's face it, we have biases everywhere in the world, and we have a lot of it here in the United States of America. So some of the, thing, the challenges I've overcome is to, to quiet the noise, because the truth is there are biases. But if we let those biases hold us back, and we self-doubt ourselves even beyond those biases and start to question ourselves and start to think, well, we can't do that, we can't succeed because the system's against us, then we'll never be able to come up with ways to either prove that wrong or create a better system for everybody. And as immigrants, I think, you know, the, the, the positive thing is when we have a strong community, we support each other. That's a positive thing, so it's not just negative. But because these biases happen, because people have preconceived notions, we have to honor the fact that that's a reality, but we cannot allow that to keep us from doing the great work that we're meant to do, keep us from going out and changing our community, building it. Um, so I would say let's, let's understand that the, the yeah. biases are there, but let's quiet that noise and trust ourselves, trust that our gifts, our talents, our services are here to serve. And if we do good and we're, we're create measurably making changes in our communities, over time, the people that had biases or maybe patrons that wouldn't have patronized our business before will understand that our work is so much more than where we came from, what we look like. Um, we have so much more to offer that can impact their world in a significantly positive way. I like it, I like it. Let's take a very quick break and we'll come back and take it from there. Dear our viewers, we're gonna take a very quick break. Stay tuned and we'll be back. Once there was a boy who did the same thing again and again. One day he was told he had autism. He got help and slowly learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Welcome back. Today I am in our studio talking to Molly. She is the CEO of SOAR Community Network. We'll continue from where we left our discussion. Molly, thank you very much uh, you. one more time. Let's talk about small businesses. You have a small business, I have a small business, and also in our county, in Montgomery County, the majority of the stakeholders uh, for the county's economy are small business mm -hmm. owners. So. This is small business owners, they have a lot of challenges. I have a lot of challenges, you have, but you have been very closely working with the small businesses, helping them succeed. So let's talk about what are the challenges they are facing and what should be done to help the small businesses thrive and succeed in our county and also in Maryland and in the United States at large. Right. 
Well, there's certain there are some obvious ones, right, in terms of small business challenges, which is always about funding, having enough resources, um, and making sure that you're business developing all the time, finding out where to business develop and who your demographics are. All of those things. I mean, there's thousands of reasons why yeah. some of us small business owners stay up late at night or you know work all the time to figure this out. But I think when we've worked with small businesses and growing businesses, when they start to really have the rhythm, it comes down to some of the softer things that we talked about. The softer things that we don't necessarily see in business textbooks, but they are so critical, critical to our success, which is really the values mm. of our organization, right? So what we do is we basically help our clients um, come up with what we call our SOAR BOC, which is the mm. SOAR body of knowledge, right? Uh, and SOAR stands for See, Own, Articulate, Release. And some of the softer skills to make sure that clients are really in a position to have a strong business plan, strong strategic plan, financial plan, all of those things to really deliver on their promises. It has to start from the leadership and the leadership has to truly understand where is the vision for this mm -hmm. company? Like, what is it driven by? Mm -hmm. What are the motivating factors behind our why for existing? So it's not just the why, it's the why behind the why mm -hmm. that we uncover. Mm -hmm. And then the mission. The mission, what is it ultimately doing to serve this greater good called humanity? And for those who um, want to support uh, animals of every kind, the, the entire planet rests on the collective of us as yeah. not only businesses, nonprofits, NGOs, all these things come together to shift the way things work in this world. Well, what is our impact in all of that? Like, who are we as an entity? Does our business have a spirit, an energy? What do we stand for politically, socially, all that? That has to be uncovered because there's too much competition not to know what you stand yeah. for. Yeah. I mean, everybody's on online now. You're competing with businesses yeah. from all over the globe. It's not yeah. just in your community anymore. So we help them really understand their true voice. We help not only the leaders understand this, but communicate it throughout the organization. We do talent management work, which is making sure that you have the right people on board to voice this message, to mm -hmm. do this work, and have this ripple effect. Um, and we really care about social impact. So we want our clients to really know what their social impact is because consumers are demanding it now. Mm -hmm. Our consumers, almost 70% of consumers worldwide are saying, if a brand does not voice what they stand for or what they believe in socially, and even in some, to some extent politically, uh, we won't choose that brand because we don't know what we're buying. Yeah. We don't know what yeah. we're supporting. So that's how we've helped small businesses is really understand their voice first, and then we help them message that, whether it's through social media, through television, what have you. That's kind of the secondary um, part of the type of work that we do. And why is that so important? Small businesses um, really have to stand apart because you're competing with so many businesses that have been around for a long time, yeah. bigger brands. So what is your unique value proposition? Yeah, yeah. It's always going to be your story. Yeah. In the 21st century, the entry point to business is very low. People can open business, but the challenge is how can you differentiate yourself and you have to know your why. Mm -hmm. I think people are looking for what you stand for than what you do or how you do it. Yeah. If they don't get a strong why, then they're not interested in why, what you do and how you do it. So that's a very important. Let's talk about one of the words that you keep on mentioning about posing. So why is posing important in business or in life or in profession? I think pausing transcends business, transcends who we are in our communities socially. Um, pausing self-reflection, really understanding who we are, what we desire out of life, what our legacy is. I mean, let's just go there, right? Because yeah. this is all yeah. about um, making a real impact in the world because of the fact that we exist. Right? We are here. And the fact that we're here, it, it's a miracle. I mean, think yeah. about what it took to make us. Yeah. All of the elements had to come yeah. together, right? So pausing really helps us stay in integrity with who we are, 
what we came to do, what all of the experiences that life has taught us, and me being a child immigrant, you know, having, whether I remember it or not, being a part of war, being inside a refugee camp, living in the United States of America, in Washington, D.C., when it was the murder capital of the world, all of that builds something in us that becomes a package of who we are. And not just the fear stuff, but also the triumphant things. Mm -hmm, what have mm -hmm. we been able to overcome? How have we been able to shift our perspective to see positive things, to see hope? How do we get ourselves out of dire situations? I mean, how did I get out of poverty? How did my family get out of poverty to a place where I run a business with my husband in Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. right? So we look at all of those things, and when you pause, you can see the whole picture. You can see all of the things that the universe and God has put in our track, mm -hmm. what we decided to take, what we decided to let go of that didn't serve us, so that we can be the best version of ourselves. Not the perfect version of ourselves, because mm -hmm. what is Nobody's that? Nobody's perfect, yeah. But the best version <laughs> of ourselves. So yeah. when we go out and we serve the world, whether it's through our business or through our volunteer work or what have you, as parents, as siblings, um, we are giving of ourselves in a place of, abundance and overflow and positivity. When you don't pause and you don't reflect mm. and you don't really take the time to uh, think about our intentions, then we're not designing our actions based on a place of power. We're reacting based on fear, yeah. based on a sense of lacking, yeah. or even kind of our society where it's very predatory. Like, mm. if mm. I have to have this because if, yeah. if you take it, I won't have. And I think humanity requires us to kind of reshift the system, our neurosystems first, yeah. and then society as an ecosystem because we're not going to survive yeah. if we don't pause and be mindful and really think about who we are as spiritual beings for love and peace and, and harmony to come out of us, to overflow out of us. I think that's what's lacking in the world right now. Yeah, I, I like what you said about we are miracles. Think about me, for example, yes. 100 trillions of cells, but I'm working like one entity. Right. This is a miracle. Right. So if I am not paying attention, there are billions of people in this planet and a lot of things to do. Mostly we rush ourselves through the day, a lot of things to do, but we succeed individually and collectively if we take poses. But that's very, very challenging. Yes, very uh, challenging. So how do you manage yourself to pose? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's so interesting. Um, my husband and I just got back from a trip okay. from India. We were up in Mount Abu. We were invited by American Meditating Radio, Sister, uh, Dr. Sister Jenna. She invited us to go. Um, and it was a peace of mind retreat run by the Brahma Kumaris, and the goal was to meditate. Meditate for peace, meditate for power, meditate for self-reflection of who we are in the world, how we show up, and what we want to contribute to society. It was so powerful. And that taught me a lot. It taught me about the lenses we put on, and when we have to take it all off, and we come from a place of purity, everything changed. I think I came back forever changed because of that. Yeah. Um, I know that my work in terms of whether I run a business or not is all spiritual work. That's what I came home with. Everything I do, this conversation I have with you, whoever's watching and tapping into this, it's my spiritual journey and my spiritual work to impact you in some way and release that. I don't know what it's going to do for you, <laughs> but to give positivity, to yeah. give hope, to give light in a time when we really need it. Um, pausing for power means meditating. For some people, that's prayer. For some people, that's putting an app on your phone like we just did and having what they call at the Brahma Kumaris traffic control. So every hour yeah. I get a little chime that says, for just a few minutes, quiet, pause. Yeah. pause. And then whatever, whatever stuff you're going through or dealing with, that two minutes, five minutes, all of a sudden just rem reminds you to be present. Is this really important? What are you feeling now? Is it a place of love or is it a place of fear? You know, are you in um, a soulful experience? Are you being a human right now? 
And that doesn't mean it's wrong. Yeah. It just means that we're very conscious that we're here living this thing. But the part of existing is also the stuff that we can't touch and feel, which is how we make other people feel. What are we contributing on an energetic, vibrational level when we see people, when we exchange the smiles? Yeah. All of those things. Um, that's how I do it. And I also do EFT, you know, emotional freedom technique. Mm -hmm. So it's tapping, you know, tapping to at the key points in your body that holds a lot of locked energy. Um, so those types of tools, we find that so we can have moments where we center ourselves, and it has to be a consistent practice. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. I, I strongly believe that, that the way the universe is wired and the way we are wired need to pause. Actually, when you see a music notes, you see that there are spaces, pauses. So it's not beautiful without pauses. Yeah. You can say a punchline and then pause. You want that pause to really help, help your audience to really think what you just said. So yeah. pausing is very important for life, for anything that we do, but it's a challenge. We have to put it on our calendar, use some techniques and so on and so on and so forth. I have like three minutes. So I want to spend the remaining three minutes on one of the things that we covered when we were talking before the show. It was about values. Okay, I can, I can have a mission, I can have vision, but if I don't have values, I can't succeed, especially in the 21st century. Countries, organizations are facing crisis, scandals, and valueless leaders. So how is value play a key role for humanity to survive, organizations and nations to keep on being in peace and harmony? I think it's one, one thing is to first uncover what those values are, what drives those values, where did it come from? A lot of times we have to go far, far deep in our childhood to uncover what really matters to us, what makes us feel whole and good. Those values um, not only are is something for us to know about, but it's also something for us to act upon. So I can say I have these great values, but if I don't mm. live my life and if I don't take, if I don't actively um, live my life through my actions, um, really living out those values, then there's an integrity issue there, yeah. right? So, and we're not perfect. I mean, sometimes we, we know what our values are and then we go and operate completely different yeah. from those values, yeah. but we have an internal mechanism. Our intuition tells us, that was wrong. Yeah. That compasses, mm, it needs recalibrating. So one, we have to know what our values are and we really have to be authentic of what they are, not borrowed from other people. Mm. Uh, understand that our parents' values are not our values, society's values are not our values, our brothers, sisters, teachers, none of those are our values. What is our value? And then how do we live them every day? What are we doing and show, how are we showing up in the world that says, I feel good about every decision that I make because my internal compass tells me so. I like that because you know, individuals should have that uh, reflection. And also organizations, I used to support organizations on how to make sure that they align their people alongside their values. Yes. Some leaders, they take the extra mile to know their values and make sure that they are consistent in their behaviors, actions. Not only that, they make sure that their people also align right. with their values. And one more, one more thought is one of the things that we love to do with our clients is to create, to help the business leaders co-create those values. So mm. we put together programs where every person inside the organization has an opportunity to contribute to writing the value statement. So that they have shared the values. Exactly. They so own them, they are committed them. to them. Exactly. That's very powerful for an organization to do. Awesome, awesome. I wish if we have more time, but with the remaining seconds that we have, how can people reach out to you, especially if they are uh, women, entrepreneurs, or small business owners, immigrants, if they want to learn from you, or if they want you to coach them or mentor them? Absolutely. Well, they can always go to our website, SOAR, S-O-A-R, communitynetwork.com, all together, SOAR, communitynetwork.com, and they can reach me by email, <clears throat> excuse me, Mali, M-A-L-I, at SOAR Community Network. Awesome. On behalf of our viewers, thank you very much. Thank I you. enjoyed our conversation. Thank you so Dear much. our viewers, I hope that you enjoyed our conversation. Until I see you with another program, have a wonderful time. Thank you very much for watching.